Today, I am going to do the review, the real story of a small AI company that gave facial recognition to law enforcement, billionaires, and businesses threatening to end privacy as we know it. The dystopian future portrayed in some science fiction movies is already upon us. Kashmir Hill's fascinating book brings home the scary implications of this new reality. Your face belongs to us. Kashmir Hill is author of the book and a tech reporter at the New York Times. Your face belongs to us is the story of Clearview AI, a secret of startup that, until January 2020, was virtually unknown to the public, despite selling the state-of-art facial recognition system to cops and corporations. The company's co-founders Hon Tundet and Richard Schwartz are some of the most interesting and complex characters in tech with some direct connections to right-wing money and politics. Your Face Belongs to Us is about what the spread of facial recognition technology means for the future of privacy. Clearview scraped the public internet from billions of photos, using everything from Venmo transactions to Flickr posts. With that data, it built a comprehensive database of faces and made it searchable. Clearview sees itself as the Google of facial recognition, reorganizing the internet by face searches and its primary customers have become police departments and now the Department of Homeland Security. As I read Your Face Belongs to Us, it dawned on me that the dystopian future portrayed in some science fiction movies is already upon us. Whether you like it or not, your face has already been scraped from the internet, stored in a giant database, and made available to law enforcement agencies, private corporations, and authoritarian governments to track and surveil you. Kashmir Hill's fascinating book brings home the scary implications of this new reality. Your Face Belong to Us is about Clearview. Clearview AI is an American facial recognition company, providing software to law enforcement and government agencies and other organizations. The company's algorithm matches faces to a database of more than 20 billion images collected from the internet, including social media applications. That database of faces is really doesn't belong to them. They've scraped it from social media sites. They've scraped it from the public internet. They're looking for photos of you, they find them. They clearly have not taken those photos of you. Someone else has taken those photos of you. How is it that they remain in possession of this dataset now that the company is public and everyone knows that they scraped all of this information? Clearview served to accelerate a global debate on the regulation of facial recognition technology by governments and law enforcement. Law enforcement officers have stated that Clearview's facial recognition is far superior in identifying perpetrators from any angle than previously used technology. With Clearview, authorities can upload an image of a suspect's face and match it against their database. The software then supplies links to where the match can be found online. After discovering Clearview AI was scraping images from their site, Twitter sent a cease and desist letter to Clearview, insisting that they remove all images as scraping is against Twitter's policies. On February 5th and 6th, 2020, Google, YouTube, Facebook, and Venmo sent cease and desist letters as it is against their policies. Clearview planned expansion to many countries, including authoritarian regimes. Contrary to Clearview's initial claims that its service was sold only to law enforcement, a data breach in early 2020 revealed that numerous commercial organizations were on Clearview's customer list. In October 2021, Clearview submitted its algorithm to one of two facial recognition accuracy tests conducted by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, every few months. Clearview ranked amongst the top 10 of 300 facial recognition algorithms in a test to determine accuracy in matching two different photos of the same person, instead of the test for matching an unknown face to a 10 billion image database, which more closely matches the algorithm's intended purpose. This was the sole third-party test of the software at the time. Clearview states their technology is not for public consumption and meant for law enforcement usage, but their marketing material encouraged users to run wild with their use, suggesting searching for family and friends as well as celebrities. Clearview also indicated they were targeting private security firms and marketed to casinos. While Clearview's app is only supposed to be privately accessible to customers, the Android application package and iOS applications were found in unsecured Amazon S3 buckets in February 2020. The instructions showed how to load an enterprise, developer, certificate so the app could be installed without being published on the App Store. Clearview's access was suspended as it was against Apple's terms of service for developers. This effectively disables the app. Clearview also operates a secondary business, Insight Camera, which provides AI-enabled security cameras. It is targeted at retail, banking and residential buildings. Two customers have used the technology, United Federation of Teachers and Rudin Management. Clearview has been sued in a few states where there's a relevant law. There's a lawsuit in California. In May 2022, 
Under the terms of an ACLU settlement, Clearview agreed to a permanent ban from selling its facial recognition database to private companies. Clearview paid $250,000 in legal fees and agreed to limit its 20 billion facial photo database to government agencies. In 2022, the startup settled a lawsuit with the American Civil Liberties Union after the latter alleged it violated an Illinois privacy law, and as part of the settlement, Clearview AI's database cannot be accessed by private entities such as businesses and individuals. It is still widely used by law enforcement. Clearview AI has given its software to more than 200 private entities in the past, including Walmart, Bank of America, Equinox, and many other companies. Employees from these companies collectively ran many thousands of searches. The FBI ranks first among federal law enforcement agencies examined by the GAO for the scale of its use of face recognition. More than 60,000 searches were carried out by seven agencies between October 2019 and March 2022. Over half were made by FBI agents, about 15,000 using Clearview AI and 20,000 using Thorn. Clearview definitely say that we're just providing the technology for them to use. They should never arrest somebody based on a Clearview match alone and that they need to do more investigating. I just think it's so personal. Who we are is in our face. And this idea that anyone can snap a photo of us and suddenly know not just who we are and where we live and who our friends are, but dig up all these photos of us on the internet going back years and years. I think there's just something inherently privacy invasive about that that just is more resonant for people than cookies or tracking what websites you've been to. It's really controlling your identity. But I think we need to ask ourselves, are we comfortable with this database of probably hundreds of millions of people, probably you and me? Should we all be in the lineup every time the police are trying to solve a crime, whether it's shoplifting or murder? And if they are going to use facial recognition technology, what are the rules? Do you need to get a warrant to search a database like this? Should every officer just have this on their phone and use it whenever they want? What do you do after you get a match? What kind of crime should you use it for? Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.